good morning and good day and welcome to the new uh, semester, new quarter and new class. Uh, this class is about biblical exegesis. And before we go into the actual uh, the class work, I'm going to introduce myself for the, some new students. Yeah, there are, I'm sure, quite a few of you who has been uh, watching uh, uh, my class or attending my class. But I'm sure there is going to be some new students. So, I'm uh, Professor Song Su Huang. That's how I write uh, my name in Chinese. So the Huang is uh, my family name, and Song Su is given name. And in Korean, okay, this is me. And uh, yeah, like uh, uh, it says, it's. I'm PhD, meaning I have a doctoral degree, and I earned uh, my doctoral degree uh, several years ago uh, from William Carey University. So William Carey International University. Uh, some of you are maybe familiar with the name William Carey. Uh, he was he was a, a famous uh, missionary to India, uh, sent by England. So this school, as you may guess, uh, follows the the, the heritage or the uh, teaching uh, legacy of. William Carey and basically they are Christian school, uh, missionary uh, school and let's see what else uh, yeah it, it is located, located in Pasadena there is another school that's uh, William Carey University but this is a different school uh, to that anyway I, I earned uh, uh, international development uh, a degree, PhD from that school. And so I've been teaching in the school. Uh, this is my second year. I'm teaching in Lowland uh, College University. And the, this, this, this semester, we are going to talk about biblical exegesis. Uh, last semester, if you have a uh, 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 attended uh, my class uh, we've talked about uh, biblical worldview and then uh, previous to that class we talked about the whole of bible so bible biblical worldview now is biblical exegesis so uh, we'll have a uh, uh, fun classes uh, we will have a uh, 10 10 classes all together, all online, uh, due to this coronavirus uh, pandemic uh, that's going on. Uh, it doesn't seem to stop. Uh, I was hoping that uh, I will have a class, a face to face class uh, this summer, but it doesn't work out that way. 
and probably we need to wait until uh, fall or winter or probably next year. Anyway, until then, uh, until it becomes uh, safe, uh, we'll continue to do this online uh, uh, lecture. A uh, good thing with the online lecture is that you can uh, go over uh, some of the stuff uh, that you may miss and you may not understand and uh, try to understand it uh, as you read, uh, I mean, review that again. Uh, but uh, there's uh, some, some uh, handicaps or uh, not so good side of online uh, as I have to do without students and uh, I don't get the feedback or response from uh, you guys, uh, the students. So uh, it's good and bad. Uh, okay, let's begin uh, our class of biblical exegesis. Uh, first, overview of this class. We are going to cover two parts. Uh, first question uh, that we are going to discuss or deal with is what is biblical exegesis? Uh, this exegesis might be a uh, yeah, $25 word. Uh, it's, it's, it's not usually used in a common uh, uh, conversation. It's a very technical word. So we'll define and try to explain what, what the exegesis means. Anyway, uh, that's, so what is exegesis and uh, what is biblical exegesis? Uh, we are going to cover that part. Uh, and then part two uh, deals with how, how to do a, a, a biblical exegesis. So what and how? How second part is more like a technical and shows a process and of how how you do it. So if you are a student of a Bible, if you are a Christian, uh, this is a, a good tool. Even if you are not a Christian, uh, if you say you are a uh, uh, Muslim, uh, believing in Islam uh, faith, uh, same thing. Uh, you study your scripture, a Quran, uh, that probably uh, you may do the same way uh, that I teach you. So that's universal. Uh, even if you study uh, the Buddhist uh, scripture, uh, that's the same. And in fact, in fact, this method that we are going to cover, exegesis, will help you do the uh, study, especially on a study of literature. Uh, this applies right away. So if you are majoring in English literature or Chinese literature, or whatever the uh, literature works, uh, this applies. So it's a good tool to learn, even, even if you're not a Christian. But if you are a Christian, uh, it's, it's a good thing that you registered for this class because uh, you know I, I, I've been teaching this uh, subject uh, last like uh, almost 30 years uh, from uh, the con most of them are college students because uh, I worked uh, with uh, uh, an organization a mission uh, campus uh, ministry called InterVarsity. Uh, InterVarsity is a uh, hundred 70 years old uh, as a worldwide uh, organization uh, working with the college and university students to evangelize, to train uh, them uh, to, to become more mature uh, Christian. So the Bible becomes a main tool when you are doing a campus ministry uh, on campus ground. Because all uh, college students, they are smart, very intellectual, and they 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 like to you know uh, research and they like to study. They like to ask questions. Same thing with you guys. Since you are in college, yeah, whether you're young or old, doesn't matter. 
we are pursuing pursuing something that is factual, something that is rational, something that is logical. When it comes to logic, uh, this method, uh, we are going to learn how to do a biblical exegesis. Uh, if it's not a biblical exegesis, it's going to be exegesis, which means uh, a, a, a investigation or a, a study of a text. Uh, so this will be a very important and useful, useful class for uh, those who are listening and attending. So try to make a best use of this. And especially if you are a Christian, if you have never been uh, doing research of Bible, you may have read some Bible, you may do, have done some quiet times uh, of your uh, personal devotion, uh, but that's kind of a shallow. Uh, this is a deep stuff. Exegesis is uh, very deep stuff. It's a, it's a deep, in-depth study of your text, which is Bible. Uh, basically, uh, these are some of the tentative, and this is not final, but this is kind of tentative uh, uh, list of the subjects that we are going to cover. Uh, the reason that it is tentative, I worked uh, all the um, uh, manuscripts and the uh, text, uh, the contents of these, but uh, as we go along, uh, it, it, it may change. Uh, depending on the responses. So, uh, first part, what is the exegesis? It covers the book with the message. And uh, the second lesson will be the interpersonal message because the, it, we are dealing with the Bible, uh, the scripture. And, and lesson three it will be the mechanics of the message. And, uh, and lesson four, meaning of the message so the, these these are the topics uh, that you need to deal with when you are doing exegesis so uh, these, are, these are the fundamental uh, the major uh, subjects or targets and uh, or objectives or goals that you are trying to uh, hit and reach uh, by doing uh, this so-called exegesis, uh, okay. Then uh, we are going to do uh, go into how to do exegesis. Okay. Now to go into further discussion, we must define. Define the concept of exegesis. Definition. This word. Definition. Uh, this this is going to be a, a, one of the uh, major uh, topic or subject. Uh, when we do the exegesis, but we need to define the exegesis first. Uh, definition of a word or a term uh, is a key uh, to uh, doing the right exegesis. Okay, let, be, before we go further, uh, let's try to define it. Exegesis means as a critical explanation or interpretation of a text especially of scripture so whether it's a bible quran or uh, buddhist books a, i mean these major religions they do have a scripture or scriptures and all these scriptures need to be interpreted and need to be explained. The reason for this explanation and interpretation is, I mean, 
any, any religion, any philosophy, uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a deep thing. And you're trying to concentrate this whole idea, vast knowledge, into uh, a, a scripture, into a, a book. And when you condense, condense or concentrate these things, especially the human ideas, you, you're going to use uh, uh, just a few words to explain, uh, to, to contain that, that idea, that philosophy, that, uh, that spiritual uh, matter. When, you, when you're trying to do that, it, it's not an easy job. So the writers of scripture try their best to uh, select the words, to, to eliminate unnecessary expressions or words. So just choose uh, the, the, the most important and put that into words, into writings. So it becomes a scripture. So when you are unwrapping, unraveling, opening those scriptures, you need to put the, the, the explanation of that concentration. It's like a... Uh, Using the that concentrate to make a, a juice, uh, you you put uh, like a, a ten portion of water to one portion of concentrate, and that's how you dilute or make a, a, a drinkable uh, orange juice from concentrate, and uh, uh, you you stack a some powder powder tanks. We don't see that anymore on the on the market. I, I mean, people don't use it anymore. But this tan uh, orange juice as a powder, and you put that powder, concentrate powder into water and mix them, and then it becomes the uh, orange juice or tastes like orange juice. So that's concentrate, and you're diluting and. Uh, putting, uh, mixing it w w with the water. It's, it's something similar. So exegesis is something like that. So first, it's a critical. Critical meaning it's not without thinking, but you you are perceiving, you are having uh, the thought of a very, very uh, aggressive and very uh, active. So these are two words. So you have to be critical. You know, critical it means active and aggressive. Critical also means it all it means right and wrong. So when you are trying to do the exegesis, you come up with. Okay, this is the right uh, interpretation. This is the wrong interpretation. So you are trying to reach the right and correct, correct uh, interpretation. That's what the critical is. Again, critical means Critical means best to first the words. So some of the interpretation is not only good, it will be best. So best, better, and good. Good side. And there is a bad uh, interpretation. Uh, it may not be that, that wrong, uh, but it might be bad and uh, worse. So either it's going to be good or bad right or wrong and your approach should be very active and also uh, critical means you have your personal uh, perspective each individual is different not only they are different in their characters and personality and backgrounds and uh, you know 
the, the, the uh, length of their faith. They, they also have different uh, style, different taste. Uh, so, everyone is different. And that means that everyone may have different opinion. And many times, by the interpretation of Bible, may just It may not be uh, either good or bad, or right or wrong. Most of the interpretation that we come up with uh, through this exegesis of Bible may be just different according to each individual. Because everyone has different opinions, we may learn from others that's, that's the art and the beauty of doing this uh, Bible study with some other people. So what we used to do in university uh, is we have a small groups. And in this small groups, we do in-depth Bible study. Uh, we call it a, a personal Bible study or uh, inductive Bible study, which is the same as what we are trying to do as an exegesis basically and you you bring that study you you, you study it at home uh, the given text and you bring it together and uh, share what you have discovered what you have learned by doing that we learn from this different interpretation there his interpretation may be different from mine or her interpretation is different from mine but it is not wrong it is not bad they are all good interpretation but it's different that's what the critical means uh, explanation or interpretation that's the key so uh, the, the exegesis is an interpretation and then of a text uh, the text here uh, the, for us is the Bible. Bible is our text. There are 66 books, uh, Old Testament and New Testament. So, 39 books in the Old Testament and 27 books in the New Testament. Uh, uh, the, the note here is this, this is a, a so-called Protestant uh, Christian Bible. A Catholic Bible is a little different uh, from uh, the, the Protestant Bible. Uh, the, the Catholic Bible includes uh, uh, the side books. Uh, so they, they, they have uh, more books than uh, Protestant Bible. It, it, because the reason is the canonization, so-called uh, authorization of the text is a little different. We'll go into that uh, matter further later on. But anyway, uh, text is, uh, uh, in our case, it is the Bible. Uh, if, if you're a, a student who is a Muslim, a uh, 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 believer of uh, Islam, uh, your text is going to be your Quran. Uh, so, uh, when I say Bible, uh, if you're an uh, 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 Islam faith uh, Muslim, uh, just think of Quran. Don't be offended, okay? The synonym, synonym for uh, exegesis uh, is exposition. It's also, exposition is explanation of some, someone else's interpretation. Usually, when you go to church, uh, and a good church, and the pastors, the preachers, may Many of the preachers uh, today do so-called exposition, which is based on the work of exegesis. So, the, what the uh, preachers, pastors do is they study the text, the Bible, at home uh, with the many books. So they study a lot of books other than the Bible, and they come up with their own interpretation. 
their own understanding of the text. And when, when they have uh, finished their work, they uh, put that into the, the form that can be delivered to the audience uh, in, in the church, the, the members of the church. So that's how the exposition comes out. So expository preaching, so-called expository preaching, is uh, a form of exegesis. That's a, actually the result of exegesis. So once you do the, uh, you, if you want to do the expository preaching, uh, you need to do exegesis. So this exegesis is basically, it is taught in the seminary. Uh, in the Bible college, uh, some of some uh, uh, so the, the, the basic level of exegesis is taught. But uh, I think I'm kind of in the uh, middle uh, between the college level and the seminary level. So this, this class might be a little uh, complicated and difficult for the, uh, those who are not believers who has never done this kind of work or study the uh, Bible. But those who has been studying the Bible, who are believers for uh, just a uh, few years, then this will be a very uh, useful tool. So you may learn it and you may apply it right away and use it. And if you're a teacher uh, or leader of uh, small Bible study, and this is a, a must tool. This is a must tool. You have to know how to do this exegesis, or in other words, we say in another technical word is inductive Bible study. So uh, another synonym is So exegesis, if you put in, in a kind of explanatory definition or the name, inductive Bible study. Uh, I'll, I'll uh, try to define what the inductive Bible study is later on. So uh, knowing this, the, this concept, the, you, you have to understand what the exegesis is. It's a critical explanation or interpretation of text, uh, of Bible. So, uh, we are dealing with a text, which is a Bible. So, it's, it's, a inter and it's simply it's an interpretation of Bible. But, not just an interpretation, but it has to be very uh, tedious uh, study. It, it involves research. It involve, involves logical uh, systematic approach. So let's further uh, try to understand what the exegesis is. It's, it's a scientific research. Scientific here means uh, not the natural science, but it, it is uh, it's a uh, uh, Study of literature. When you study a literature, you you have uh, several uh, different uh, approach to the studying of uh, literature. But this exegesis uh, focused on the content and the mechanics of the the text. So scientific here means not the natural science. It means the very logical rational and systematic approach.
So scientific means this. It has to be logical and it's rational and it's systematic. So it deals basically deals with facts, not emotions, not feelings. Your, your feelings are less important when you're doing ex exegesis. So, say, if you're doing like a quiet time, uh, a personal devotion in the morning, read the text for about 10 minutes, and then uh, meditate on it, reflect on it, and get the lesson, and then you pray and uh, start a day. Uh, that's what most, I mean, uh, mature Christians are doing every day. When you do the uh, personal devotion, it's more, more, more about uh, your feeling, uh, your response, or right, uh, respond, your uh, immediate response to the text that you are reading, and it's 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 less scientific, less scientific. Uh, so that's different. Meditation is not a scientific approach to the Bible. But I don't, I'm not saying that meditation is not uh, uh, important. It is important too. But when we're doing exegesis, uh, we are trying to be as much, as logical as possible, as systematic as possible, as rational as possible. So if you're based on the facts and it becomes very Objective compared to being subjective. Subjective means your own, your own opinion, what you think, how you feel. Objective means uh, others can also agree. Uh, they say, oh, it's, it's, it's relevant, it's, 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 it's valid. So when other people say it is valid and they agree on that validity, and it becomes objective. So exegesis try to be very objective. Now, second point, it's, it's a creative art. While exegesis is, is very scientific, on the other hand, it's, uh, it's an art. It's an art because you are being creative. Uh, who you are is very involved into the text. It's woven into the text. So you go into the Bible, uh, the biblical text, and you come out of it, and you bring out the, the result, uh, your understanding, your interpretation. When that happens, your personality, your experience, your style, your knowledge, all, all these are all involved in that interpretation. So not only is it scientific, when it's a, a scientific, it becomes dry, very dry. But when it becomes an art, a creative art, involving yourself, involving your character, involving your personality, then it, it, it becomes very uh, tasteful. It becomes beauty. So there's a beauty of doing Bible study. Uh, I mean, yeah, this, this is only, I, uh, you know, possible when you have done it and when you have experienced it, then you know what I'm talking about. So it's like an experience of going into the art exhibition or musical concert or uh, having a good uh, the, uh, gourmet food, I mean, the high quality food, so it's a personal experience. There's an excitement. There's a, that artistic feeling. That there's a, that beauty uh, of understanding and knowing and uh, getting the the, the, the the meaning, the true meaning of the biblical text. The Bible becomes alive into you, you, and your life. So that's. Uh, why I call exegesis is a creative art. Thus, it becomes holistic. Holistic means it involves all of you, not just your brain, 
When you do the science, I see your brain, I see your intellect. How it matters how smart you are. But when you are doing uh, bio study, exegesis, uh, the being smart is a plus, but it's not a, a, a must. It's not a hundred percent. It involves your mind, your feelings too, and it involves your spirit, the whole being. It involves your person, your personality, and it involves your your life. And in your life, there are people that you know, people that you care, people that you are worried about. These people are also involved. So it becomes a holistic. It involves all of you, not just your brain. So when you are doing the science, like a, for example, chemistry, physics, there's no such a thing of being holistic. There, there's no such thing of being a creative art. But when you are involved in Bible study, there's something more than uh, just a study of literature, study of text. It goes beyond that. That's, that's the beauty of uh, doing exegesis. It takes a hard work. It takes a hard work. Uh, many hours and, and many researches. You have to go through the pages and pages of documents. Uh, but it, it become a lot easier than uh, 30 years ago. Uh, 30 years ago, we did not have computers. Uh, we did not have a, a smartphone. Uh, today, it's all your, in your hands. The, the uh, part two that we are going to do, how to, how to do exodus. Uh, and nowadays, this, your smartphone will be enough. It's probably more than enough. That's a good tool uh, that you can use in, in doing uh, the, the exegesis. But still, it takes hard work. It takes many hours. It, it, it takes uh, the, 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 the uh, even, even the, to the level of despair. Because you have to really think and uh, do, do the thinking, thinking, and thinking. So it involves uh, your sweat, your time, your energy, and it's, it's not an easy job. It's not, I'm going to tell you, it's not an easy work. It's hard. And next is this is basically it is listening. Because we are dealing with a personal message, a, a very interpersonal message. God is speaking to you, uh, even today, at this very moment. Because He is God, He is able to do that uh, through that ancient text. Uh, some, some of it, like a 3,000 years old uh, text, uh, more than 3,000 years old. And, and from that, that uh, text, it becomes alive and you actually be able to listen to what God has to say to you at this very moment, at this very hour. So it's a listening experience. Exegesis is not a, just a study on the desk, a uh, job dealing with the many documents and data but it involves God speaking to you personally. The, all, the reason that we are doing exegesis, this interpretation work, uh, very, the study and research, is because we want to listen to God, the live, live message from God. And it takes some meditation, some meditation. It involves your prayer, it involves deep thinking time-consuming, thinking over and over again on the one just word, one topic, one sentence. It is very critical, uh, important in doing exodus. So now, uh, by, uh, by this time, probably you, you, you need to, I mean, you must get the picture of what the exodus means. Exodus is in depth interpretation critical and the creative and it is also scientific so that's 
what the actual this is. So you, we are, uh, I mean, uh, going into this very involvement, very involved, we are going to be involved into the Bible, the text. And that's what the after this is, is about. Now we are going to the next topic, which is biblical exodus. Exodus is a critical uh, study, uh, interpretation of a text by uh, doing uh, the scientific study. Now, biblical exegesis, on the other hand, is the exegesis of the Bible. So, this is uh, the, what uh, this, this class is about. It means that exegesis appropriate, appropriate to the biblical interpretation of persons principle. So there are certain principles that apply to the study of Bible. So we are doing this study within, according to uh, uh, this in interpretational principle. So we'll go into the detail, but uh, just remember, biblical exegesis it, it we do within that biblical interpretational principle. And uh, three, biblical exegesis, it means exegesis according to the biblical teachings. So, this, the, the, the uh, uh, interpretation of certain passages cannot, cannot be contradicted to the interpretation of some other uh, teachings. So all teachings come together into a coherent uh, message. And because God cannot deny himself, uh, one part of Bible cannot deny the other part of Bible. So one part of, part of Bible cannot say the other part of Bible is a lie. But it has to come together, which is very important principle in doing uh, biblical exegesis. So biblical teachings, one teaching is uh, harmonized with other teachings in the Bible. They never contradict each other. This one thing, uh, some, some teachings in the Old Testament has changed. Uh, uh, by uh, Jesus Christ and then the New Testament teachings a little different but they do not contradict so it finds a harmony always harmony uh, within the Bible on the contrary there's a word called eisegesis eisegesis uh, it's different from exegesis this is the interpretation of the text, a text, as of the Bible, or example of Bible, by reading one's own idea into the text. Uh, this is, this is uh, sadly, it happens many times. People try to put their ideas or secular ideas uh, or secular, secular uh, philosophy into the Bible. And that, that's, that's against the exegesis. So we are not doing exegesis never. This is wrong. Okay. Yeah, right and wrong. This is a wrong kind of interpretation. It is a bad interpretation. So exegesis is you're reading your idea, your philosophy, your, your worldview, uh, your, your culture into the Bible. And it, that happens. I mean, it happens. It still happens. It probably uh, uh, many, many preachers, the many pastors, even do this, and they put their own agenda, their their own motivation, their their own uh, uh, ego into the Bible, 
and read it out and teach something else other than gospel. Uh, when that happens, mm -hmm. people, because they never done I, uh, exegesis, they haven't learned Bible by, by themselves, they are misled, misled. And they are taught in the wrong things and they begin to believe in the wrong things. <coughs> It is okay to believe in a different thing, different thing, uh, within that uh, right, uh, uh, per, I mean, right domain. But it is another thing to believe in the wrong thing, false uh, belief. So I say this is, is a very dangerous uh, idea uh, regarding the interpretation or study of Bible. So when you study the Bible, you don't want to do eisegesis. But unfortunately, there is always the danger of doing eisegesis rather than exegesis. Now, we have this fundamental question. Uh, first, why would you want to interpret the Bible? Why would you, uh, I mean, to deal with, uh, study, and research the Bible? The answer is because we want to understand God's ultimate message for you, for me, for us, for the whole human generation. So God has this ultimate message. In spite of uh, 66 books, 39 in the Old Testament and 27 in the New Testament, uh, it, it, the whole Bible focuses on one ultimate message. And we'll try to find out what that is. I'm not going to say uh, up front at this time, uh, but you are going to discover yourself. That's the whole, uh, the, 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 intention of doing exegesis. Exegesis means I'm not going to tell you what to believe. And I'm, gonna, I'm not going to tell you what the Bible is saying. I'm, I'm not trying to force you anything. Uh, even if you're a Buddhist uh, or a believer of Confucian idea or, uh, or communist or a Muslim, doesn't matter. You have and right and responsibility to study the, the Bible. Because the Bible, as you know, is most published uh, book, literature ever in human history. It, is, it has been trans, translated into uh, 6,000 plus languages so far. And so, almost all all the uh, Bible is translated into almost into all the languages uh, that you can possibly find on earth. So, uh, and also it's most read book among whole population, whole earth population, since the beginning of human history. And for the for now in the twenty first century, still it's the same. The Bible is the most read book ever at this this age, even still. So, if that is the case, even if you are not a Christian, if you are not a Catholic, uh, you, you, even even if if you are not a uh, uh, Muslim, you you're still uh, even if you are not Jews, because Jews and Muslim and uh, and uh, uh, Christian Catholic. Uh, we believe in probably the same Old Testament and the same uh, uh, the, the, the faith, uh, the, the text, but those are other religions. Yes, you still need to study the Bible, right? Uh, that's, that's an ob obligation as, as an intellectual uh, being. So, to understand that ultimate message. If there is if there is God, 
And if that God uh, has spoken, then we need to know before before anything else, because it's very important. It's critical for your life, for your existence, for your meaning. Uh, there has to be a meaning in your life. And people, many people today live without having the meaning. The meaning. Just meaningless. And that's why people go crazy. That's why people go for money. Because they, they think that money means the most. Money means the most important thing ever. But that, that's not the case. We know that. And once you find out the money is not everything, then we need to find something else. And uh, we believe, the Christians, uh, I believe as, as, a, as a Christian and as a pastor, uh, I believe that this Bible contains, it contains the ultimate message. That's the reason. Number two, to respond to the message. Not only listen and uh, understand, uh, the true understanding comes when you respond to the message. So listening is not enough. Hearing is not enough. And when you listen and hear, that you are going to respond with your whole person. That's what, uh, why we need to uh, study and interpret the Bible. There are two practical questions that we are going to cover uh, through this uh, class. What is a biblical interpretation? Another way, what is exegesis? Number two, how do we interpret the Bible? So in other words, how do we do this something called exegesis? So biblical interpretation, uh, what and why, uh, how, what and how. These are two key topics, subjects that we are going to deal uh, in this class. So first, we need to cover this subject. What about the Bible? Uh, you need to have a just basic idea about the text that we are going to uh, tackle, uh, approach, and study. So the Bible is our text for this class, at least when we do this exegesis. And uh, so we need to understand the uh, basic of the Bible. The Bible is divine, divine, meaning it's God-given. It's it is, it is originated from God. That's God's word. So the Christians, us believe we are dealing with God's spoken word. God's spoken word. Which is written by some of the authors later on. And uh, so, uh, if you're not a Christian, you can suppose Maybe, maybe the Bible is God's word. That's where you can start. Maybe, possibly. You, you don't have to believe it, but you, you can at least say, what if the Bible is truly God's word? That's going to be the question that you're going to address. So even if you are a Christian, you have all the right and the reason uh, to do the exegesis the interpretation of Bible or study of Bible. It is divine because it's holy and sacred. Holy and sacred means a human. Us human are not sacred. We are not holy. We are sinful beings. We have all sin. We are dirty. We are contaminated. We are not good. We are bad. That means, uh, on the other hand, God is good. Wow, we are bad. God is clean. He's pure when we are dirty and contaminated. So, He is sacred and we are corrupted. And the Word of God is sacred 
is holy. That is a reason that we, it is worth to study. If if the Bible is not sacred, if it's not holy, it's, if it's just like a, uh, some of those uh, dirty books that we read, then, and then we don't have to do the exegesis. You just read it, and you feel it, and you enjoy it, and you just throw that away. And uh, that's, that's not worth to study. But this Bible, we believe, is divine, and it means it's holy and sacred. It teaches us how to be holy, how to be sacred, how to be right, how to be good. Divine, it means mysterious. Because it's mysterious, it, it needs to be interpreted. There's a certain mystery, that's, there's a certain secret that is that, that, uh, that, uh, uh, unknown. And to, you need a key to open uh, that secrecy. Uh, you need the, the, the code to, to understand a uh, certain message. So it's like, uh, you know, uh, working on the secret code. Uh, you know, what the secret code? Uh, when you're involved in a war, there's an enemy. You don't want an uh, enemy to listen to our conversation, right? So you use a secret code to, to uh, communicate uh, within ourselves. But enemies, they, they would not understand, right? Uh, yeah, in the World War II, I believe, uh, uh, they, they used the Navajo language uh, to uh, do the, the uh, communication. And uh, Germans and, and uh, uh, Germans will not uh, understand, right? So uh, that's, that's kind of a secret code. And God is being plain. Many times he, he says uh, the things in plain language. But sometimes it takes us some, some uh, uh, work to understand his, his secret code. Uh, it involves this kind of mystery. It is a mystery because even if it's in the plain language, you don't get it. There are many teachings in the Bible that is very plain and simple. And it, it is understood by the children, but you are not able to understand. And not, it's not because it is written with a secret code, but because you are blinded. And that happens. I'll explain that later on further. Some, some of the messages is beyond human understanding. See, for example, uh, the Christians, the uh, Catholics, uh, we believe that God is three and three is in one. They are exactly the same God, but three persons. This, uh, in, in Islam faith, uh, they cannot accept that. There's only one God, Allah, and Allah only. There's only one God, and there's no other God. If there, there are no other gods, that's idol worship. So that's uh, Islam uh, doctrine. But Christian doctrine, there are three gods, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But these three gods are the same one God. Which doesn't make sense. It's a mystery. It's, it's beyond our understanding. How three can be one and one can be three? And, uh, you know, it doesn't make sense. So there, there are some of the things in the Bible that is mysteries and it's beyond our understanding. Which also still need some interpretation, ex explanation. What exegesis does is make it uh, possible for us to understand and accept. Even though uh, you cannot, you may not explain in a logical way, uh, but you still be able to understand. That's what the exegesis do. Scripture, the Bible is a scripture. We're talking about uh, Bible, right? The text. 
So this text that we are dealing with, the Bible, is a scripture. A scripture means it's a religious writing. Religious writing is dealing with the religious matters like a, a life, a salvation, sin, and these things, right? Uh, so, uh, any 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 book that deals with a religion include uh, the salvation matter of salvation, uh, matter of sin, and uh, uh, some religious ethics. Right? So, Bible, uh, just like other religious uh, scripture, it does contain the teaching about salvation and about the life, how to live, and uh, how, how not to do certain things. So, it's a religious word. It's doctrinal. All the scriptures include certain doctrines. Teaching about God. Teaching about God. Uh, teaching about how to do certain rituals. So, it involves uh, uh, rituals and, uh, and uh, how, how to worship and those things. How to pray. These things are included in, as, as doctrines. So the Bible does have these doctrines. Okay? And uh, because this scripture is heavy and it is deep. I mean, the subject of life, salvation, and sin, these are very heavy and deep subjects. And you want to, you are trying to concentrate these Things, the ideas, the teachings into a book. And, you know, it takes a lot of explanation. And, and you can do like a, a, a two hour sermon on just one passage in the Bible. So, I mean, if you put all these explanations together, it's going to be hundreds, hundreds of books. So, you're trying to concentrate, compact those things into just few words and a few sentences and because of that it is heavy and it is deep and because it is heavy and deep you need to do some research you need to do some uh, uh, meditation to unravel and to understand and it is highly sophisticated highly sophisticated these topics, it's all related. There are hundreds of different topics that are talked about in the Bible. For example, Bible does talk about the marriage. It does talk about marriage. It, do, it does talk about the father, son, uh, the relationship, wife and husband relationship. These are included in the biblical teaching. It's in the Bible. It talks about how to do the hygiene even in the, in the Old Testament. So, and it does talk about how to the, uh, do the business in, in a, a biblical way. And so all these life topics are in there. Because of that, it's highly complex, very sophisticated, complex and uh, because because of the nature of scripture, I mean, it is not only the Bible. All I mean, other other uh, books, other scripture. Uh, for example, Buddhist scripture. Uh, there are many of those, and uh, each of them are very difficult to understand. It's sophisticated, complex, and hard to uh, uh, understand right away. So you need to read it over and over again until you come to the grasp of it. Because it's a religious matter, it's a spiritual thing. It's not that easy and simple. And thus, it is inspired, inspired, meaning <coughs> it is not humanly written. All the scriptures most of scriptures are claimed, they are claimed to be inspired by God or gods. It's not a human invention. It came from outside our world. 
human capacity. So it comes from beyond somewhere else. Inspired, uh, inspired meaning uh, it, it came and, and, and came into your spirit and your spirit kind of connects to the other spirit or bigger uh, spirit. In our case, it's God, the Holy Spirit. So the scripture is inspired. And Bible, it, it is uh, a presence of word of you. Bible is a word of you. Bible is a, a godly word of you. So as God sees the world, so the Bible basically is how God sees the world, how God sees his people, how God uh, sees the history. So in the Bible, you learn how God's perspective on human being, people, God's perspective on the, in the history, God's perspective on life. The Bible as a scripture, it, it, it involves all these word views, it, it shows. And every word view, a valid, relevant, would you include the topic of truth? So the Bible, it does contain as a first primary subject, it talks about what the truth is. So Jesus tells us, I am the truth. I am the life. I am the way. The truth, the life, and the way, these are very closely connected according to Jesus. And I think that truth is about life and truth is about the way of salvation. Truth is about uh, knowing God. So uh, it presents uh, uh, truth. And it, as a word of view, Bible presents the values. What you should value in your life. Is it money? Or is, is it relationship? Is it, is it uh, your, your uh, fame, your name, or is it your family? What is, what is the virtue and the value? So, word of view, as a uh, Bible, as a word of view, it does uh, contain that such. Reality. The word of view, it, any word of view in, uh, in, uh, in, in a culture, uh, it does talk about the reality. They try to explain the reality you, you're facing about the nature, about the, your clan, your ethnicity. These are the reality. And then the, the aging, the time, and the space, the territory, the weather, these are the, uh, all the reality that you are faced. The money, the house, and the animal, the plants, something that you can eat and something that you cannot eat, these are the realities. And it's a part of the world of you. Because uh, something that you can eat in a certain culture, you cannot eat, you cannot eat at all in other cultures. So why does that happen? Because there is a difference in the world of view. Uh, there is a difference in the, uh, the virtue and the value. So the Bible presents uh, the godly world of view, godly, God, godly reality. It also talks about human existence. So why do we exist? How, how, how should we live? What's, what's the value of life? So these are the things that, that the Bible deals with. And uh, the, the learning, I mean, when you're doing exegesis, the interpretation and the study of the Bible to understand that, that you are learning about these things. So the key to the, uh, the Bible study or the exegesis is not to be religious. You're not learning of the religion. Uh, that's a part of it, but that's not all. 
Actually, we are learning about the biblical worldview. In other words, God's worldview. How God sees the world. How God sees our life should be. So that's the key uh, to it has some uh, instructions. Uh, okay, there's a, like a spiritual uh, instructions, doctrinal instructions, rituals, laws and regulations, and life lessons and information. And uh, yeah, I think the time is up for today class and I'll continue uh, this uh, instruction subject. Uh, on the next class. Okay, thank you. Bye.